check and hello everybody what do we got going on here whoa i should have kept me on hi chart lunar gary missing sky i'm missing sky mrs missing sky is picking up from miss milky folks she puts an amazing amount of work into those videos if you're looking for the latest greatest information missing sky is on it okay and you can share it you can remix it hi julie hi cats alive steve diver dude china whoa i like it hang on okay we're streaming perfect looks good hi miss milky everything's looking good folks sydney bob anybody don't know what i'm doing i'm saying hi to everybody we're just coming on to a live stream it's around seven uh, eight o'clock pacific time canada each night i really miss a night janet aqua limp baba taxi tracy may candace so it usually takes me about five minutes to get warmed up folks it, uh, conversation is to the left of the screen we are live and you can comment live lisa broken ass islander uh lisa diver dude 2012 tracy albert michael darren Woo! stephen moyer hi stephen broken ass islander john kind of grandma julie wow you folks gonna be rocking here tonight ricky cats alive cherry again stetson hey bud head down on spam me again last night unbelievable man they keep sticking you in the spam but you show up though after i unspam you so that's cool and i'm still adding people to the list so you can comment i don't know you know i gotta get in there and have a look i guess to make sure i got everybody that's youtube's new uh you can get hi kathy real night writer craig we're almost through them looks good so dana the fear monger is back for another go oh yeah looks like we're winning the scrap out here we've noticed that in the last 90 days it's impossible for me to get under 12 14 1800 or higher and in the last two days down to 700 that's pretty crazy youtube changed their news page i don't know if that got anything to do with it but still that's really interesting so that means we're getting to them uh they're out smacking away at me again all day in the last three days kind of reached a crescendo last night nobody tries to debunk me nobody tries to call me out and the ones that do use potassium 40 and that's zoe in the background if you're wondering what's going on which everybody probably knows anyway and the natural indigenous insignificant harmless background radiation from uranium and see there's the earth is full of uranium and that's how come the core of the earth exists it's because all the heat in the earth all the uranium creating all this energy that's you know when you put it all together actually created the core of the earth and that's where all that energy and all that heat and all those precious metals of the core have come from and so it's like you know it's doing this thing down there and it actually breaches the ocean in a couple of places on this planet now uranium when it goes through a chain reaction the gammas the betas the alphas the x-rays the neutrons are completely different they're a different creature and 0 0.08 of 100 pounds is used for weaponized production the rest of it is uranium 238 that's turned into weapons and every year for nine years the canadian and the americans we're firing and the british we're firing uranium 238 at the rate of about 2.5 million rounds a month from mcallister's bomb manufacturing facility in mcallister oklahoma into other people's homes gardens farms rivers and because that's actual when you shoot it through the air it catches fire it releases the atoms because it's traveling at such a high rate of speed it's releasing all these radioactive atoms of uranium 238 and it's contaminated with neptunium americaniums uh, which have a very long uh, plutoniums and which have a very long uh, life and we see fallujah with 80 percent of the children are born with defects so terrible so gut-wrenching heart-wrenching that the women don't want to have uh, babies there anymore and who's going to take care of those children in the future uh, during such you know they're victims unimaginable amount of victims because of this uranium 238 as a byproduct of the weaponized military industrial complex making weaponized isotopes to use for 
exotic weapons like directed energy weapons. And so we don't need uh, the massive amount of MOX fuels, which is milled missiles, nuclear weapons, that was at Fukushima, to make power. We just need the normal uranium that was in Earth and created the core, and that was enriched. And the second that we got to big global re or citywide reactors, uh, th these were disguises by the military industrial machine to make weaponized isotopes. And so a lot of countries do this. And all countries, are, their nuclear reactors are leaking into the ocean. Their spew, uh, full, uh, fuel pools have to be refilled all the time, which means they're evaporating. And of course, if the fuel pool is full of radioactive material, then all those isotopes are also being released into the environment. The licensing agreement for the nuclear power plant is that those isotopes and all the byproducts of it, like the uranium-238, are safely locked up in sarcophagus for quarters of a million years. And maybe that generation can figure out a way to deal with these uh, unnatural, uh, extraordinarily harmful ionizing radiation particles and materials. And so they've never actually done that. They spent the entire time saying, yeah, that's what we'll do. And then they go out and they dump it into the ocean, or they dump it in your community, release it into your community, and they all have pipes that run into the ocean, and they release it into the ocean because they don't want you dropping dead on the streets because that looks pretty friggin' bad for nuclear power. But at 2.5 million rounds a month, McAllister is only one of four bomb manufacturing facilities in the United States that only make depleted uranium uh, weapons, and of course. You can't turn off the weapon after the war is over. Uranium has a half-life of 4.5 billion years, and the half-life of the isotopes breaks down to another radioactive isotopes, another radioactive isotopes. And this goes on to the process that's known as the, the tin. So if an iodine-131, which is indicative of a recent chain reaction fission that was uncontrolled and released into the environment, meant, and now because... Iodine only got a half-life of eight days. It's used repeatedly in the media. And so people hear, you know, eight days, no big deal, it's gone. Well, iodine doesn't travel by itself. Along with it comes iodine-129. Also along with it comes the cesium-137. Wherever there's, and cesium goes after the heart, goes into the muscles. And uh, along with cesium comes 30 times more strontium because they were using weaponized missiles milled down to make other isotopes, exotic isotopes for directed energy weapon, even if it kills the Pacific Ocean. They, and they built it on a fault line in Fukushima. Now, Chernobyl, in comparison, was uh, one-third the size of any of the reactors of Fukushima, one-third, and it was using graphite, totally different fuel. Had nothing to do with MOX fuel. MOX fuel is considered two million times worse than any other reactor. This is according to the media, and all of this is according to the, author, to the actual studies on this. And we don't really go into detail into how this really affects every aspect of every life on this planet as, as much as we should, because there's been such a huge release on the ocean, 45,000 barrels off San Francisco, seven submarines, seven ships rather, filled up with barrels and sunk off Russia, along with several submarines with reactors on board, and I mean shiploads and barrels and barrels of more in Russia alone. Then you have Hanford hemorrhaging to the ocean, Iraq and Afghanistan, Somalia with uranium-238. That's all contaminated with the neptunium and the americaniums and the plutonium. Plutonium-238, 239, 240, 241. And so they have to come out and lie all the time, all the media, all the scientists out there, they're all lobbyists, and they come out and equate everything with potassium-40. And so we have to come out and educate people that potassium-40 is indigenous, insignificant background radiation. And if you consume potassium-40, I call it off-gassing, but what it means is you get rid of, whether it's through your skin or evaporation, I'm not quite sure, how, uh, or through all of that, rather, but your body is like a thermostat or like a cruise control on an automobile. And so it regulates something. And so your body does that with potassium-40. 
And so this is what they put into the equation all the time, because it's in, but it's insignificant, harmless. And to put it into perspective, your body has 4,400 becquels, disintegrations per second, of potassium-40. And so that sounds like a lot of radiation. You know, if you had 4,400 becquels of strontium-90, and there's 30 times more strontium-90 whenever you hear of cesium-137, strontium-90 goes right into the bones, and also gets sequestered into your organs, where it's continuously putting out energy for its entire life's entire half-life, which is times 10. So when you think about it, because it's weaponized, it, right, and it's, it's a longer-living isotope. And so all of these are very concerning. We, you know, we have to face up to what's really going on. We can't say that it turns into potassium-40, which is ind indigenous, insignificant. Everything is potassium-40. There's potassium-40, potassium-40, just put potassium-40 in that. Potassium-40 is on this planet. Everything is adjusted to it. It's insignificant. It should never be in the equation, but we have to come out and apologize because people use it in the equation. So if you had 4,400 disintegrations every second in your body right now of cesium-137, you wouldn't be watching the video. You'd be dead. If you had 4,400 disintegrations of strontium-90, you wouldn't be watching this video or listening to it. You'd be dead. And you'll be on a nuclear waste site because you were radioactive. And you and your bones will be radioactive for a long time. Now, if it had got uranium-234, 235, and because if iodine showed up and it was 100 times more iodine here in Canada in March and April, then what they consider background radiation. Now, background radiation can go up to 90,000 becquels disintegrations per second for some water, for, you know, in some places. It's extraordinarily rare. But at average, you're getting eight or 10,000 becquels for a glass of water or insignificant potassium-40 natural radiation that everything on this planet is acclimated to and is superiorly se selected through generations and millenniums and that has no issue with potassium-40. There is no issue with potassium-40. It's like there's an issue with breathing air here on the west coast of BC or the west east coast of Canada air is air is air here in Canada. There might be significant, or a little, not significant, but difference, obviously, in some particulates, but it's like breeding air. So why would you bring potassium-40 into an equation where that if I had a glass of water with 4,400 disintegrations per second of uranium or plutonium or cesium or strontium or iodine, and I gave it to one of these scientists, they wouldn't touch it. But you gave him a glass of water with uh, potassium-40, 10,000 becquels in it, uh, they drink it gladly. It's no big deal. And so will you. So would anybody. That's what we drink. You can't escape it because everything on the planet is potassium-40. And so they bring that into the equation to confuse you, mislead you, misdirect you, and to manipulate you, and turn you against people like myself who only want to help you understand what the big cover-up really is and why it's so harmful and why it's uh, can't continue any longer you know you would have to if I fill this room up with bananas with natural potassium 40 in it, it can't hurt me unless it falls on me you know all of it but and even then it probably won't hurt me because it's got no momentum <coughs> but if I fill the room up with uranium 238 the size of banana you couldn't get close you couldn't get it like 600 feet uh, when downwind of this building, you die. Because it can't contain the radiation. The whole building would, you know, it would radiate like uh, something, like a horseshoe you had in, uh, that you had red hot and you were going to put it in shape. The building wouldn't radiate with that kind of intensity of heat, but with that kind of intensity of radiation. So as you got close to it, instead of feeling heat, you probably would. You know, on top of Chernobyl, which was one third the size of any of the reactors at Fukushima, there were 10 or 12,000 Rankins. So they went out on the roof for 15 or 20 seconds and then they went home. At Fukushima, they're taking the homeless off the streets. And they're putting them there for weeks and months. And some of them certainly don't last that long, depending on where they put you to work. Because they won't do the job themselves and they won't let the international communities come in there and assess it. They're willing to take a voice, but they're not willing to let anybody in there. 
But they let CBC and BBC in their little while ago and they showed us the interior of building four. They stood outside building four in the back area, allegedly, and what they claimed was building four. And then they went inside and they showed us this perfectly symmetrical nuclear power plant that Molly made, probably spent the entire day inside of it. And that was obviously a mock-up to teach. There, was, there couldn't have been anything nuclear there. And this building four had detonated and had two fires where the zirconian had burnt off the claddings because the pools went dry. Because the earthquake, well, the tsunami came through there, it was 50 feet high. So it took out all the wires, it took out all the power. They told lots of lies and the fire reports are below and you can shift through it. It's worth doing, it's from the government site. These are authentic emails and there's millions of them. There's also millions or a couple of thousand pictures below to Tepco's website that was taken by the Fukushima 50. So it's not for lack of information. There's unbelievable amount of models out there of other government models from other countries like Switzerland, Norway, France, even Canada, Health Canada. There's a model down below that Health Canada carried out on March the 18th to March the 19th from one end of British Columbia to the other by a multi-million dollar plane with multi-million dollars worth of sensing equipment and every 15 minutes at around 750 feet. And that's, a, that's, that's from the Health Canada. It's a PDF file. But there's a story just before it of the Washington blog where they called Canada out a few months ago for manipulating it. We covered the headlines of a hundred times. Iodine 131, which meant 10%, or one in every four is iodine 129. But what that means is, you know, the uranium came over, plutonium came over, all their daughters, the strontium, of course, there's 30 times more because of that MOX fuel with the cesium-137. So if you look up Fukushima model cesium-137, you'll find all kinds of it from all kinds of governments. These are known models, dispersion models. And over the last few days, I've downloaded 25 new ones for a very special project. That is extremely important. These models are 20 to 30 seconds long, and they're the official models. Get the nuclear, the nuclear regulatory commissioner, Alison McFarlane, as I covered her a few uh, days back during a congressional hearing up from C-SPAN, stated there was no models of the Americans. Now, they had their own models, which I showed repeatedly here, of the CC-137 dispersal and how that circumvented the entire Northern Hemisphere in 40 days. And so that's not just going to disappear, turn to dust, for a couple of hundred years, some of it will disappear. But you can't have this stuff because reactors are mostly, if not entirely, uranium, which was the enriched uranium and the enriched plutonium from the weapons that were left over in silos for the last 20 or 30 dec or years and was remilled. On a site that has around a thousand up to 5,000 a year earthquakes, surrounded by the ring of fire, where they, they have uh, decent sized tsunamis pretty regularly, and big ones, historically, are they're vulnerable all their entire existence. They have been vulnerable. And to put this kind of uh, MOX fuel, which is two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet, in a position, in a spot, where it was 100% vulnerable, where there was no other way for this not to happen, and where the media lied consistently and constantly, even up to now, because, you know, when you go in, you got to stay in. The study down below from Health Canada tells the whole story, really, in the very title of it. Measurements in the plume over British Columbia. So the plume over British Columbia. And so the plume was from the jet streams all the way down. And so this stuff gets re-liberated because... A, they sprayed salt water on the reactors. Now this created a phenomenon never seen before because it's never been done before. And there's been a couple of peer review studies. I got one down below about it. It's uh, known as buckyballs. I explained it a little bit. But then you can go to the actual study. And what it means is it created these spherical balls that are one thousandth of a one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter. And these these buckyballs got about 60 connections and they can ingest 
deatomized particulates of uraniums 234, 235, and their daughters, your any uranium daughters, and plutonium daughters, of course, and even strontium in the cesium and the iodine, and put them in there and turn them into their own little nuclear engines. And they're not solutable in water, which really gives them a phenomenal ability. They're like the size of the dust in your house when you sweep your house. It's perfectly clean, and the sun is shining through the window. You can see dust everywhere. Well, that's about what we're talking about. These are known as hot particles, and they were seen in the numbers of around 1,500 per cubic meter of air in California um, in uh, March and April, also in Seattle. And then the dispersion models from around Canada, showing around Canada completely, the Northern Hemisphere, in every model, even from the Japanese themselves, and we're going to be doing a really good video about that uh, probably tomorrow. Hopefully it'll be finished. I've been at it most of the day. And uh, I think it's extremely enlightening. Uh, it's, it's pretty shocking, but it should be... Uh, it should finally nail the coffin shut on nuclear power once and for all. Because you can't maintain the law anymore. You can't manipulate the population anymore or society anymore. You can't go society anymore and doing your biddings. You know, the whole world understands how much uranium got fired in Iraq. I mean, the A-10 Warthog shoots a ton and a half of uranium-238 a minute. And so what that's the animosity equivalent of 71 Nagasaki bombs being released into our environment. But these are chunks. And they also, because they're going through the air, they, they're burning at high speeds. And they're releasing the atomized radioactive micro size from the distance all the way to the target and then when the target gets hit with what's left over they turn into pieces which give off uh, x-rays and neutrons creating their own isotopes and that's why you see like Fallujah where it was such a big um, slaughter there they killed so many people it was like the highway to hell in Kuwait in 1991 for Desert Storm where they used around 700 tons and they couldn't do anything with it, only bury it in the sand. And it's still there today. It's radioactive till the end of time. Because that's uranium-238. You can't turn it off. right? It's a, it's a direct war crime. It's against all the laws out there. Um, don't want to digress. And so Fukushima, you had three detonations, hydrogen explosions, and one alleged nuclear explosion. And I can't remember off the top of my head if that's Unit 2 or 3. Uh, unit 3 or 4 that they say might have... I think it was Unit 3 they say it was a nuclear explosion. And because Unit 3 was MOX fuel, it was, it was using milled nuclear weapons as fuel. It was using the most refined product on the planet that already went through a chain reaction, so it was already a couple of million times worse. And the top of the buildings had fuel pools. And when it goes, when you go through the chain reaction and go into the fuel pool, the fuel pool is meant to keep it cool for 20 or 30 years. And those pools boil off because that stuff is so hot. They're always pumping water in it perpetually. And just like they're doing at the plant now, they're pumping water into the plant Perpetually. Now, what happened was the plants blew up. Unit 1, 2, 3, and 4 detonated. And the detonation was felt 25 kilometers away by AP reporters. But, you know, these were huge detonations and big chunks of the building, the buildings themselves that were 10 stories high, a couple of them, uh, Unit 3 in particular, is missing. Now, those fuel pools, and there's quite a few of these, like there's four or five fuel pools on top of each building, each fuel pool had 1,535 bundles, and each bundle had 80, uh, 80 rods in it, and it was a zirconium cladding. And so when the poles had their backs broken by a 9.0 earthquake, that appears to be most likely set off, and we don't know if that was a nuclear weapon or whether it was uh, the infamous harp that has, we've seen the interviews with the people who run these installations and say, that they're just for scientific research. But, I mean, that's a long time ago, and now we know that other countries are also using this technology, and it has, uh, we turned it into a weapons, a weather weapons war society. 
Which brings me back to the Philippines that I keep forgetting about. The Philippines and also Tonga, of course, were hit by you know, Philippines 295 mile an hour um, I forget now. Oh my goodness. 295 mile an hour sustained winds. I can't remember. I can't remember what Tonga's winds were. Hang on. That's what I'm talking about. Tonga right there. Now these places, these were the fastest winds ever recorded on the planet. There we go. 287 kilometers an hour. Did I say miles per hour? 287 kilometers an hour. Let me double check, folks. Hang on. 280 kilometers an hour. 287 kilometers an hour. These are the fastest winds recorded during storms. There's a few places on the planet where the winds do get really fast. And, but these are usually mountain passes where the wind gets funneled. Known as they're known as weather spots. The, the, the typhoons, they went over Japan and converged over Japan. Then they picked up all these radioactive isotopes. It came out into a radioactive ocean where it's hemorrhaging out of the plant. And what's going on here? It's hemorrhaging actually out of all of Japan. So every time it rains in Japan, it's liberating isotopes into the sewer systems into the lakes, into the streams and the rivers, into the aquifers, and also washing it down into the ocean, of course. But the Fukushima hasn't start, stopped hemorrhaging, not only spewing aerosols, because it has three melted reactors, but also because underneath it is a natural riverbed built up on topsoil, 100 foot of topsoil, and the plant is on top of that. And the theory was that if it has a meltdown, it goes down and lands on the riverbed, and the ancient river, which has worn away the soil for millenniums down to rock, bedrock. And so that's why these rivers, ancient rivers exist, because they're all the way down to the bedrock, right? Well, that's supposed to flush everything out. That's their backup plan on every nuclear power plant on the planet. Is That's the called their oh shit plan, where the river comes in or the ocean comes in and gets at the corium. That's built into their architect, their engineering. And so this way they can get back on the site and try to salvage that part of the country. Now, what happened at Chernobyl was around 3,800 square miles that are still evacuated. But back in the late 40s, back in the late 40s, hang on folks, back in the late 40s, in Soviet Russia, a lake contaminates you, um, where did I get the name here? Yeah, I can't pronounce that name. Techa River? T-E-C-H-A-R-I-V-E-R, of course. Um, so they relocated 7,500 communities. 7,500 communities that were downriver and where a lot of contaminates and fall. Now, what happened then was they decided to take all because they were rich in plutonium there back in the late 40s, but they just evacuated 7,500 communities, but they still had to go after this weapon. So they stayed in production, and then all the material, they dumped it in the tanks. And about 10 years later, the tanks detonated, and those were felt about 25 miles away. They had a hydrogen detonation, because the tanks now were full of all the americanium and all the, the uranium, plutoniums and the Neptunians and all the heavy metals and toxins were dumped into these tanks and because they sat together and they pulled themselves together and created their own chain reaction. And that's a phenomenon. And that might be just a small chain reaction. But it'll burn itself down through the tanks and cause the tanks just to, to, to level out and burn out. I mean, it's... it's uh, Hanford's got 450 billion gallons, just a few hundred miles away from us, dumped into their soil. And they have 41 miles of open pits. 41 miles of open pits. I like to see uh, Ken Buesler go down there, go canoeing in those pits. And a Dixie cup of this will kill everything in a building, in a restaurant, inside of an hour. A small, tiny cup. And it'll do that for 4.5 billion years. 
And anybody tells you any different is a lawyer, is, a, is an outrageous lawyer. You don't have to look too hard to find out the truth, okay? The truth destroys the lies. And, you know, like 300,000 rapes over a decade in the military to get 11,000 Taliban. Um, 5 million orphans in Afghanistan to get 11,000 Taliban, the same 11,000 Taliban. Fired 5.5 million bullets. Half of them were depleted uranium. Uranium-238. That was completely contaminated with all the others. And you, they fired that in every aspect, in every community down there. So if you have a little speck on the ground, you're supposed to dig up 900 foot of topsoil, 6 inches deep, and put a fence around it. And universal signs on it. Because the people who might be coming by there might not speak your language. Because it's contaminated. You're supposed to walk away with a Geiger counter and build your fences. And that whole area is off limit for thousands of years. That's the standard, the universal standard for this kind of contamination. But so in other words, every house in Afghanistan and Iraq, where there's two million widows, where there's four million missing, where there's about four or five million in refugee camps, where most of the population now is suffering unimaginable cancers and autoimmune deficiencies. And you got millions dead, millions missing, millions of orphans, millions in refugee camps. And they can only grow GMO crops there. So GMO got no nutrients, it's got no minerals, it's got no potassium, no magnesium, it's got no calcium, it's got no iron, it's got no cobalt, it's got no carbon, it's got nothing in it. And it's got toxins in it, formaldehydes and glossophates. And of course, they add to your cancers, they're fuel for the fire. Same as sugar is fuel for your cancer. There's a link below to DCA, it's a good link. And DCA is a natural mineral. Uh, there's no uh, patent on it. You don't need a prescription for it. And you can probably get it through your health food stores if you ask them and try to order it in. You probably get a much better deal on it. It's really easy to do. You probably got to pay for it up front to coax them to do it if they don't have it in stock. And not many do carry it in stock because it's considered innocuous for some reason. But it's been tested on many exotic uh, diseases and is found to be completely benign. And that um, it's been discovered to reduce all tumors by 70%. And there's no money in cures, right? There's no money in cures, there's money in patents, right? So you got to create the product so you can have the patent. And then while you're doing that, you get all kinds of free money from your government, from the taxpayers. And then you get um, a lot of publicity. And then all the doctors are willing to go out and drug the population. 80-something percent of British are taking depressants and pharmaceuticals, psychotic inducing pharmaceuticals. And they got to pump them out because they only got the patent for a few, you know, say 20 years or 30 years on most things. Well, they got to get the most out of it right to the very last second. Or they, if they're lucky, they can reclassify it and use it on children and keep it for another 10 years, which is what they do. And so we have a drug society. The only drugs that are legal are the ones that come from the handful of corporations. Of course, a cor corporate personhood, corporations, uh, there's nowhere in any of the charters, nowhere in any of the Bill of Rights, the Magna Carters, the Constitutions, does it mention in any of our countries that a corporation should have human rights except for a little amendment to the slavery laws and the slavery laws were created to free black people from a tyrannical government and are now being used because the corporations put an amendment on that to give themselves human rights and so they're using the slavery laws to oppress the sovereign people which are you you're the free people in the land and so when, like, when it comes to taxes, the uh, Constitution, Bill of Rights, and the Magna Carta is all state that you can't tax the citizens, you can only tax the corporations, and that way government couldn't get too big, it wouldn't get out of control, it wouldn't become a, a war mongrel, because it didn't have the, the influence or the money. It was there for a function, right? You don't need ten people stood around with shovels in their hand 
to fix a pothole. You can contract that out to a local business in your community. Right? So if Tim Horton shows up in your community, there goes all the mom and pops. Right? If uh, McDonald's shows up, there goes all the mom and pops. They'll get destroyed because the kids all want what they see on TV all the time. And TV's not going to show mom and pop. And, you know, corporate corporations using all GMO. And so you're hurting your child. It's child abuse to do that to your child. To give them to corporations. Like Walmart. Uh, if it wasn't for Walmart, half of China couldn't sell their toxic goods. China doesn't even have to try to sell it. Walmart takes it. Somehow manages to get it into our countries where a lot of time it gets rejected. But only 2% of the container ships coming across the ocean are respected. And I know I went off down on a ramble that time. But there, see, there's a bigger picture in life that people don't understand. And that radiation, for anybody to kind of put it in the same category as potassium-40, and they all do it, they all describe us as citizens, we're the boss. We pay their, we pay the bills. Who pays the bills again? The Canadians, right? Like you say, there's 4,800 peer-reviewed academic studies published every day. You paid for the universities and institutions. You paid for the lights, the powers. You pay for the, uh, the expendables, the paper towels, the toilet paper, the janitor. You pay for all of that. And then all the knowledge is locked up. The copyright is given away to a handful of corporations. And I wanted to go read a peer-reviewed study the other day. It was $35, and I could rent it for 48 hours. From my, you know, from our institutions that we we paid for, so that's 1.6 million peer review academic studies that are probably a thousand hours long and a thousand pages long, a lot, you know, the majority of them that are locked away from everybody. 1.6 million a year, 1.6 billion man hours a year that you pay for. Canada pays 35 billion dollars into its institutions, and that's the copyright of that is given away. And I can't get access to it unless I take some anonymous person on the internet who I have no idea who they are, who could be very well number one people, but how can you trust that? Why can't I get access to it? We're a standalone subscription to Elsevier, and Elsevier, Springer and Wall, they got 20,000 of the most prestigious academic journals. They get the pick of the crop. They get the cream of the crop. Right? They tell the universities and institutions what they're going to be doing in the labs for the next 30 years. Their curriculum is full. Unless something comes up at the publishing houses, the university will be glad to oblige them. Don't worry, the taxpayer will pick it up. But you've got to take the copyright and put it away and lock it up forever. And then we're called citizens, right? We're put into a category where we're something like um, inferior. Like the government somehow is better than me. Like somehow the government's word is more is worth more than my word. How is that conceivable? Our government hid away that link below, hid that away from all Canadians. Never said stay indoors. There's a plume coming through here in March of 2011, a hundred times worse than anything we've ever seen. No. What they done was they kept it and hid it away and now it's out there in the last month and a half and the graphs from Health Canada. So they knew. They took a plane and flew it and sniffed the air at 700 feet right up to the entire coastline and found a snowstorm of radiation. But their detectors are looking for a Pacific radiation. but And that's all they find. Does that mean that's all that came? Of course not. You can't have any of it. The iodine didn't just say, hey, let's go to Canada. And uranium daughters, plutonium daughters. What a sick name to name the most dangerous thing on the planet, daughters. Right? See how to twist it there? They try to lovingly engage it into your life and every aspect of your life. Right? Some part of the radiation. Then they say, oh, radiation helps you here. Radiation helps you there. Well, there's 300 to 600 tons that they're emitting to finally going into the ocean every day. The models that we see are only based upon initial releases, and they show the entire Pacific Ocean 
radioactive, minimum up to 4% right now. But if you do the models, if you do the numbers yourself, that's all it takes is pick up the calculator and it's 5,500 miles. So if the currents are traveling at 4 miles an hour, it's 47 days. They could be traveling up to 9 kilometers an hour. But let's just say for the record, they're only traveling at a kilometer. Now, I spend my life on the ocean, and I find that hard to believe, but let's just say it anyway. So, one kilometer an hour, 24 hours in a day, then it's a 132 days. And whatever puked out of Fukushima is here. Now, what you got to realize is the next day it puked out again. And the next day it puked out again. But it didn't do that either. It done it every moment, every second. And every minute and every hour so it's not like it went whoop, plurp, and they waited that's three o'clock time to puke out another 300 tons no 600 tons we're not counting what's washing out in the river that's washing over because these buildings detonated over the entire site it sank down in that topsoil that 100 foot of topsoil i was talking about and that whole site is kept wet the entire time there's spots on that site you just can't ever go to. There's dead bodies on that site. That's why they don't want to let the international community in because they were the canary in the cage and they can't retrieve them. The site is broken open through the earthquakes and the fissions. So what happened was when the rods went out there and blew up all over the place, they already had that 9.0 earthquake. The entire site got picked up, the buildings were picked up, and their backs were broken. And you can go to TEPCO's website on the link below. There's 2,136 pictures. And you can look at the earthquake damage yourself and see all the breaks. And so the rods went up in the air and some of it landed in those breaks. So just having some of them there is bad enough. But having the detonations where each pool got 122,000 rods that are 12 feet long that are weaponized military industrial complexes isotopes we don't need those isotopes for power and that's why i got 700 views on my video last night 700 views the night before because i say shit like this and because if i make mistakes and i do then it gets used to destroy me it gets used to marginalize me and to try to make me look incompetent but anybody who says the word potassium 40 in this equation is a very dangerous person because they're educated and they know better and that if you offered them a glass of 4400 or say 9000 becquels of potassium 40 they'll drink it I'll offer them a glass of 9000 becquels of any of the radioactive ionizing isotopes that we talk about the real stuff and they'll run they'll jump up they won't even look at you they'll be gone I kid you not that's exactly what will happen you won't even see it. You bend over and pick up that glass when you say you got it. And as you come around, they'll be seven, eight feet away from you. If they think you're serious. And they won't be stopping. They'll be gone. Out the door, in the vehicle, on the phone. And uh, the government will be kicking your door down and shooting at you. Because you're a terrorist. But it's okay for them to go over and fire 2.5 million dirty bombs a month. I mean, there's 22 veterans committing suicide every day, homeless, and destitute, and the only one we hear about is the person who got blown up in Iraq because that makes kids angry and gets them to join the military. The world you live in is a perverse and disgusting, manipulated society, but because of the internet and because people take the time to educate themselves and connect dots, in an eight-year period, we have seen a changing of reality where the truth now is dear if you take the time and you put the time in you will find out as you go down that hole it's it's very there's so many deceptions it's so hard to wrap your mind around it that that's what we got to do somebody has to be there to keep pushing it out there so that people have a true narrative and that if you research my entire narrative and you find a mistake tell me you don't have to go off on me. If I did make a mistake, it was just a slip up. It wasn't on purpose. 
It wasn't malicious. It wasn't intentional. So you can't make this stuff up. Uh, if you try to make it up, it, you know, the only way, the, what I see from making it up anyway, and that I debunk here regularly, and everybody knows me regularly do it, is about potassium 40, or the same as when you walk down the road, the sunshine has nothing to do with this equation. Or when you fly in a plane, that's completely different radiation than the radiation from a nuclear power plant. But yet people do equate that all the time. And they, they act sincere, but they actually know the difference. It's very shocking that people like that really do exist, and but they make a living doing this, right? They have something to gain. And I'll cover more of that in the next couple of days, you can be sure. I, gotta, I don't want to give the game away. Um, <clears throat> let me say, uh, now that one in Russia in the late 40s where they evacuated 7,500 communities and uh, the, the tanks had detonated after the 10 years before that, they had to evacuate 7,500 communities and 9,000 square miles, miles, that is probably full of coal that you can never get at. Imagine burning the radioactive coal. Coal got some natural radioactive people. Say, oh, Dana, coal's got some natural radioactive there. <laughs> so the bananas. So the baseballs. So do you. This has got nothing to do with it. I could fill the room up, and it is, with potassium-40. Look at me, I haven't got cancer. But if you were to take a big rod and put it here for Fukushima, the MOX fuel, two million times more deadlier than radio, any other radio, I don't know what would happen, but I can assure you I probably wouldn't be finishing that sentence. And my body would go to a nuclear waste site, getting hit with that kind of power, that kind of energy, that intensity. That day I want to equate with potassium-40. Oh, Dana, you know, cesium-137 goes into the ocean, turns into potassium-40. So that's why we can dump, you know, that's their excuse. That was uh, Ken Buesler's Woodhull's Oceanographic Institution that I tore apart last week, saying that the reason they can dump 90,000 becquels of cesium-137 into the ocean is because you're allowed legally in, in a little tiny place somewhere in America 90,000 becquels of potassium-40, where the average is maybe eight or 10,000. But because of that, it's the same thing. And so they go to all the universities, and the students get it, you know, they keep ingesting that over and over and over, and they start repeating it. And saying, oh, that's ridiculous to say, there's natural uranium in the ocean. What are you talking about? Well, I can take a bat in the ocean every day. It can't hurt me. It can't hurt you. You're not going to get cancer from it. I was a commercial diver for 14 years, and I would spend 315 days a year six hours a day on the ocean floor. I ran the biggest shows in Canada, period. Bar nothing. On both coast. And so, if I was swimming at the fuel pool in Fukushima, you'd be in a hell of a lot of trouble. You ain't, you know, you can't do something like that, see? Because it's radioactive beyond imagination. It's, right? it's got nothing to do with potassium-40, but that's what we're up against, apparently. This is this is what they've been using for many, many, many years, for decades. And now, finally, we have a narrative that you can fill the room up with bananas, can't hurt you. But if you got a banana-sized chunk of uranium-plutonium combination from Fukushima or any of the nuclear reactors, uh, it'll kill you before you finish that, finish that sentence. And so when that falls in on... The melted cores at 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit temperatures, then that aerosoled it, and atomized it. And a gram of it produces more radioactive atoms than all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet. So what does 122,000 rods in four or five pools that are missing do? How many atoms is that? And so the models that we talk about are only showing the cesium, which is created... When the rod, yeah, there's a buildup inside the rods because of uranium and uh, plutonium. And because the, the rods are not made of cesium or iodine. Reactors are, don't run on cesium and iodine. So wherever there's cesium, wherever there's iodine, there has to be stra strontium 30 times more. And there has to be uranium, plutonium. And because you sprayed the salt water on the reactors, you created the spherical buckyballs. And then we know the plumes came out of the reactors for the last 160 days. 
They do have shelters over them, but they have to vent it constantly, and you can never get inside of it. You will never find a picture on the internet of anybody at TEPCO with a cutting torches hanging off Unit 4. You won't find them there with scaffolds at Unit 4. Right? you got the building blocks with cranes dropping big chunks in that all packed together, and the big panels that were brought in on the crane, and then they got lips on it, and they sit over that, and the next one goes on top of it, and you can't get up there and tighten things up with a wrench and go back home. The homeless that they're putting through that place and throwing away like trash after, they're, they're uh, doing horrible deaths. Right, they go take the homeless off the streets and give them cancer. And so your graveyards, I mean, the entire country is radioactive in Japan of a minimum 300 becquels per square meter. The children's playgrounds around, you know, outside of Fukushima Prefecture itself now have been measured at, after de what, allegedly being decontaminated. How can you do that? There are still a million becquels of CC-137 per square meter. And then now that country has been offline since October 25th, 2013, when they had a 7.4 magnitude earthquake. And now they're fake, and they were worried about Building 4 tipping over because the ground has liquefaction, which means they sprayed so much water on it because of all the rods, and they have to spray into the building perpetually till the end of time, that the ground has become liquefaction. Plus it also was broken up with earthquakes. The buildings were lit, picked up and broken. The pools were broken. That's why they have to pump water in there all the time. And so they put concoctions in there, borium and that, thickness, sand and lead, to try to block up some of the cracks and they're able to keep the water in there. But it boils off. A lot of these rods w w weren't spent fuel at all. They had taken it out for repairs. And so these were extraordinary, unusual, in a very compromising position. And so these bundles, where there's 80 rods in a bundle, right, they're like a cigarette pack. If you twist it and you try to pull a cigarette out, one breaks, well, it releases all the gases. And so they have to evacuate, try to off-gas that, hope they don't have a detonation again after four unprecedented detonations. And by the way, that's what they had at, Chir at uh, Three Mile Island, with a 50% meltdown, and he lied about and covered up successfully. And because people all around here were moving big cities, they never tried, and now they can't keep track of who got cancer or had autoimmune deficiencies. Chernobyl evacuated 3,600 kilometers, still permanent. In the 1947s, the 9,000 kilometers is still permanent. And then after the tanks exploded 10 years later, another 10 years went by where they dumped it all into a lake that had no outlet. And they had a drought, and the lake went dry, and they ended up evacuating now permanently another 1,000 uh, miles because of contamination from the lake drying out all the radioactive rods, spent fuel, yellow cake, being common and exposed, and then uh, chain reaction. And so we dumped barrel after barrel after barrel. We have Sellafield, England, in the U.K., 8 million liters a day pouring into the ocean. And they just had an alert where they told the workers to stay in their homes, not come to work, and stay in your homes. That's interesting, because they got to pay the health insurance. And then they canceled the alert and said it was natural radon, like they do everywhere else. Oh, it's just natural radon. And then all the media, oh, it's just natural radon. And there's no oversight. There's no checks and balances. And now what we realize in the day of information age is that they have lied to us the entire time. So why? Why is it necessary to make up stories about potassium-40? Why not tell people about uraniums, the, the plutoniums, the strontiums, and the cesiums, the iodines, and their daughters, and the implications? And why do, why do, do they always equate everything with something that has nothing to do with man-made radioactive isotopes is a very intriguing question. Is it not? And when they do talk about it, they blow it off as if it's just going to evaporate. Even though they say, got a half-life of 30 years for strontium or, or cesium-137, well, 
That's times 10. Right? It degrades and de- degrades into another radioactive isotopes. There's ex- no radioactive isotope that man made has any kind of health benefits to you. And then the kicker of all it is, is no matter what came out, there's always a massive release of cesium-132. Now this is the nuclear right chain division 132. It's not the the normal background that they also name. So this stuff got a half life of two or three days, but it also got times ten, and it goes into your thyroid glands nine times more effectively. The jet streams travel at 100 miles an hour. So every hour for 24 hours is 2,400 miles. Comes straight across the ocean. Now it could be traveling three, four, or 500 miles an hour. We don't know uh, exactly, but you can look it up how fast it was traveling during that period. The ocean currents, it can come across at four kilometers an hour. It's here in 57 days. Not six years, not 10 years, but 57 days at four kilometers an hour. Imagine at 9, which it does travel in quite a lot of places, but also think about if it's at 1 kilometer, then it's times 4. It's still a far cry from 6 years, like they try to tell us. We might see a little insignificant bit show up, but it didn't stop hemorrhaging. It's still hemorrhaging. So if I take a bucket of dye and put it in the lake, and another bucket of dye and put it in the lake, and another bucket of dye and put it in the lake, that's equivalent to what I'm trying to talk about or in the swimming pool at some point. And because these radioactive isotopes, if I take a glass of water with 75 th- a million to 100 million phytoplankton, which are the very basis of the food chain, and I drop one of those radioactive strontiums, cesiums, uraniums, plutoniums, isotopes into that glass, what happens? It kills 75 million to 100 million of the phytoplankton but that's not all that's in that glass and so that glass can't produce oxygen no more all the life in it is dead it only took whatever an hour say five minutes a minute whatever so you dump that into a bathtub of salt water with hundreds 10 to the power of 25 phytoplankton not mentioning all the other microscopic animals and creatures and it'll kill all them I can dump that into a swimming pool. If that isotope is allowed to, with fresh water, with or salt water, with all this phytoplankton, it'll kill all of that. So what can 300 tons a day going into the ocean dispersing? It doesn't lose its energy. It doesn't become the, what they call salutable. When it sinks to the ocean floor, if it does, about two percent of it, it's brought up in a natural cycle of cold water, and that's how nutrients are brought up to the surface, and that's where the phytoplankton hang out. And they make 50% of all the oxygen on the planet. But they want to equate everything with potassium-40, which can't do anything that we talk about tonight. And so anybody who looks up potassium-40, says, oh, well, it's pretty harmless. Mother Nature got a pretty good defense against it. Of course it does. It's genetic superior selection. is why everything, all creatures on this planet exist. It's because they superior selection for living with potassium-40, the natural insignificant indigenous background radiation. Did I just talk for 55, 58 minutes? I'm sorry. Let me say goodnight to everybody. Hi, CDC. I'm going to come in after and read everybody's comments. I know I'm just frustrated. I had to go off and make sure I, I clear the air. And if I do make a mistake, you know, I do this every night. It takes hours to get ready. I have to listen to every lecture, the good, the bad, the naughty, the freaky, the crazies, who all propagate out potassium-40. So when I research it, well, that's got nothing to do with nuclear fission. And so you can't trust the institution. You can't trust the medium. You can't trust the radio, the TV station, because they didn't say simple words of, well, well, you know, uh, are we supposed to drink water anymore? Well, it's potassium-40. It's okay. It's only eight or 10,000 becquels. That sounds like a lot of becquels. Yeah, but it's potassium-40. Well, why are you talking about it? Can I drink eight or 9,000 becquels of cesium? No. Will he drink eight or 9,000 becquels of uranium? Ha, ha, ha. He's up and running. Plutonium, eight or 9,000 becquels in a glass of water. Here you go, Doc. Ha, ha, ha. Have a nice day, dickhead.
Go pick up that glass over there, Doc. It's only got eight or nine thousand. It's got ninety thousand. That's legal, boy. If there's no issue, you'll fucking drink that. If not, don't owe me the apps again. Right? And if I call you out on my show, if you're from the University of Victoria, or you're from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, or you're one of the other bootlick and cheerleading leading lapdogs for the military industrial machine, and I call you out, just remember, if you didn't lie, if you didn't fabricate it, if you didn't misrepresent it, I wouldn't be there doing that to you. You deserved it. I'm obligated to do that under the Bill of Rights in Canada to not let lawyers, particularly people that are paid by taxes, um, someone has to hold them accountable. And when people complain, no one holds you accountable. You've got a system set up to protect yourself. And so the great equalizer right now is the Internet. You find a lawyer I told. Right? That's your challenge. Find a lawyer I told. Find a misdirection, misrepresentation. I'll find it in anybody else because they type of potassium 40. Hi, Miss Milky. Good night. Yeah, I lost my voice a little. I scream at the mic every night. It's okay, I don't stop all day. Thanks, Albert. Lunar. I'll come in and read everybody's comments after. Thanks, Angela. Kathy. Gina. Would you date a genetic mutant? I don't take anybody's DNA right now is what it used to be. Nuts for art. Thank you, Candace. Tracy May. Stetson. Toxic. Robert. You're welcome. The Limp, Cats Alive, Dayton, and Sylvia, Reram, Craig, Miss Milky again. Of course, we love Miss Milky. Wanna be live 24 Aqua, Annie, uh, Beckett changed counts tonight. Hi, Annie. Photo Control, thank you. And everybody else, DC, Aviator, the real night writer, like I say, Kathy, Angela, I got, can't keep up with it now. Buzzing boy. <laughs> But I really do enjoy that when I uh, have my cup of tea, get everything up and running again, sort things out, coming in and reading the comments. Um, that's why I say I know I know you people, I know your moods, and I look up everything you're saying because i got no options. And so 1,100, 1,200 comments a night, that's great. Just any more than that, you're going to kill me. I'll still read them, though. You're not going to kill me, but... It's a lot, it's a lot, and I'm actually getting extremely good at it. And I don't, like I say, I don't speed read, so it takes me a long time. And I, I always, it's like a little book for me. I enjoy myself. It's very, it's very uh, cool. It's uh, you should try it sometimes, folks. It's actually quite cool. All right, we'll catch you folks tomorrow night. And I'll drink lots of uh, lemon tea and try to get my voice back. That'll be pretty funny. Oh, by the way, I got hacked. My good computer got taken out this afternoon, and I only used that. Uh, for peer review studies and for reading. That's all that thing gets used for. Shocking. That's uh, it's three now in the last number of months. Unbelievable. And I can't get it back. It's unbelievable. And you know what I'm like with a computer, folks. It's unbelievable. There it is. Shocking, I know. But hey, I still got four left, so I'm good for a while yet. <laughs> They're not taking me out that easy. Thank goodness I back everything up. Back everything up on your computer on a hard drive, folks. <laughs> Trust me. It's pretty scary stuff. Take care. We'll catch